to see Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Alright, so I've tried to make this video like three or four times now and I don't know if that's just a sign or what but I even one time recorded the sound for the entire video and the audio was trash. I tried to make it work, I cranked it up to like 300% volume and it just wasn't happening. I was so mad. And you might say, well who gives a crap about this book, you know? I don't know anybody that's reading Secret Warriors. And if you are, then you haven't told me about it. <laughs> but I read this book just on a whim. I was like, I'm going to check out something different that somebody's not reading and see how it goes. And Secret Warriors is kind of a, a niche team because you have Kamala Khan and Quake on here and you have Kamala Khan on uh, the Champions team as well. And Mark Wade writes the Champions like trash. They're all narcissistic little brats. Uh, that talk to adults like they're equals and that really gets on my nerves because they need to respect why would you not respect superheroes uh, the most of all I mean these people have fought Galactus before and you'd be, you've been a superhero for like two years but uh, here, here's my deal with this comic book I'm not so much into the story because the story is a huge mess it is just a complicated mess and we'll go over there in a, that in a minute but um that there's something I want to show you that's very important about this book and it's the way that they portray certain characters that they don't do so well in other books so let's look at this cover here for a minute we have uh, Mr. Sanster on here and uh, he's not in this book but he's on the cover for some reason and uh, he has business clothes on because sometimes they portray him more like a you know a business tycoon than than an arch villain but I kinda like the suit better than I like this outfit but it's very detailed it's a good job I'm just it's not my cup of tea um, so let me show let me read you the convoluted story behind this uh, here we go when a cosmic cube transformed Captain America into the ultimate Hydra sleeper agent former shield agent Daisy Johnson aka Quake organized a team of Inhumans to take him down in the fight against Hydra the warriors discovered that Karnak had given his own son to the villain Dark Beast for experiments in hopes of finding a new catalyst for Inhuman powers Dark Beast, kind of interested. Appalled, the, the warriors split up. Karnak joined Anilix, the inhuman company owned by Ahura Botagon, while the others tried to return to their normal lives. But then Dark Beast kidnapped Inferno's niece, Arilla. Uh, joined by X-Men Magic, the warriors team tracked him to a warehouse full of children with inhuman genes. Dark Beast ambushed them, but the fight ended with the Dark Beast employer revealing himself. Uh, are you confused yet? Mr. Sinister is on the hunt for Inhumans, and Karnak has been enabling his horrified, horrified experiments. But their deal's fallen through, and unless the Weirs get what Sinister needs from their former teammate, he'll kill Aurelia. Before confronting Karnak, the Weirs rush to return the children to their homes, but the last child was booby-trapped. He just exploded in front of every news camera in Iowa. Oh, gosh. You could have done one of those storylines, and that could have carried on for 20 books. So the team we got here is Quake, Miss Marvel, Moon Girl, and Devil Dinosaur, Inferno, and Karnak, even though there's a lot more members than that. The writer is Matthew Rosenberg, which for some reason came out of nowhere and they just started putting him on everything and he's not very good. Uh, but they just started putting him on these, on all these books. Like He's, he's doing like three books now. I don't understand. Um, and the art is, is by Xavier Garn and Will Robson. It's very important that I show you that there's two artists because they're trash but let's talk about this so we get this first page and oh my goodness look at that art is that a marvel comic right now or is that a fan art oh and it's just random random pictures on a gray background what in the heck Blech. so then at the bottom we get this funny little description drawing for each one of the characters on the team that was there during the explosion and it's pretty funny my thing is they wouldn't have colored the pictures because it's supposed to be sketches but it's still kind of funny but then they chime in and says is that supposed to be me I don't look like that yeah you totally do I'm sorry can we just shut this off and so then they're hanging out at New Atelian and the other Inhumans are looking at them because you know they're they they do not really fit in 
And uh, let's talk about this for a moment. Uh, Camilla says, you all didn't think I looked crazy in that drawing, did you? And uh, so basically then they go on to talk more about what happened. And Camilla says, or Kamala, how you say her name is, Kamala. She says, I'm concerned because we were trying to save those kids. We should be out there telling people, clearing our names. And then Moon Girl says, uh, ISO asked us to lie low while the uh, other Inhumans handle it. Right now, they hate us out there. And she said, they don't love us in here either. And I was I was kind of thrown back by Moon Girl talking like that. You know, Moon Girl should be a little nine-year-old. She shouldn't talk like a peer or be drawn like a peer. But uh, so then Inferno jumps in and he's getting angry because he's not being accepted by the Inhumans. And he says, you know, we fought. We're Inhumans too. And Magic's like, I'm not. And he said, we fought for them and all they give us is dirty looks. And then he says, oh, look, it's nausea and grind. Hey, hey. So he tries to run them down, and they're not wanting to talk to him because on the last mission, mission he pretty much ditched them. He said he went back for help, but really he just ditched them. And he's, a, and he's sorry about it, but at the same time, he tried to act like he didn't do it. So then um, Magic pretty much tells him, look, you know, Dante, uh, enough. Let's put your anger to use. And he said, why do you care? And she says, uh, I want to help you save your niece. And I'm bored. So then she leaves. And they go to the Anilix offices, and gosh, it's more terrible art. And it dips back and forth. Every other page is a different artist. And now we're back to this terrible art again. Ugh. And pretty much the police are outside because uh, Anilix has been uh, drawn into this uh, deal with uh, S Sinister and his um, experiments. And Karnak could actually give him the equipment, so they figured that out. But he did it, he did it for a reason. Uh, he says, uh, "How?" they asked him, they said, how would a maniac like Sinister have prototypes of our equipment? He said, I gave them to him. And he said, why did you do that? And he said, uh, uh, you, I mean, he says basically that he, he had a plan behind this. There was a reason he did it. He says, I have prote prepared a contingency plan. I diverted the funds stolen by your board member to a new shell corporation called Lunar Holdings. All money was routed through Atlantean banks. The company is incorporated in Latveria, uh, and the board consists of two of no members of any nation recognized by international law. In short, the corporation is untouchable. And your transfer and ill access assets, they too will be secure. Modern corporate law has many flaws. I'll save your company, and Sinister will be touched by any hand save his own. So then, um, that we have this scene where Magic and Inferno pop up. You know, they're there, uh, and Elix, they're there to get his niece, and uh, <laughs> Inferno gets sick from using her teleporting power, her magic. Then they amp up, they get ready, they power up, get ready to fight, and Inferno looks retarded. I don't know why they drew him. I know he was sickly, but they should have had him beefed up and getting over. I mean, he looks like a hunchback or something. And so then, uh, Boltagon shows up, and uh, he pretty much tells them, look, I can't let you go any further. They said, we're here from for Karnak, and he's like, I can't, you know, I need him, so you can't have him. So then they start having a fight with him. And they seem like they, you know, are starting to get the one up on him. But then he quickly takes Inferno out and, and uh, uh, incapacitates him. But Magic uses this opportunity to get close to him. And then they teleport away so that they're not able to be captured. Pretty much it was a failure. So then we get more talk about what happened to the kids. They're all in stasis pods, the ones that they saved. And, they're, and uh, then Camilla says... Uh, she says to them, she says, look, Iso, I know we messed up. We weren't prepared for what happened last night. And she said, you, you couldn't have saved those children anyway. I just can't believe uh, S Sinister did this. And you say Karnak is involved? And she says, they tried it on Karnak's son first. Where is Lear? Moon Girl uh, made sure he was taken care of. You left him in the care of a nine-year-old? Was not was that a good idea? And it's a mess up right there because Moon Girl is standing literally right behind her. <laughs> so then... Uh, we, we get an idea of what's going on. More terrible art. I mean, he could draw a dinosaur pretty good. That's about it. But she had left the, the boy with uh, Devil Dinosaur. And Devil Dinosaur, I mean, is the best case scenario because he's just going to protect him. So then we get back to uh, Magic and Inferno are back. And uh, they don't look too happy. So uh, 
they're asking him what happened and says, you look like people that just spoke to Karnak. And he says, nope, couldn't even get to him. The jerk Ahura just attacked us in the lobby. And then that's when they say, you know, that doesn't really sound like him. And he says, you don't believe me? And I like this because at first I was annoyed that you had this guy just acting like a goober. And then you had all the women completely calm. But his name is Inferno, so he's a hothead. It makes sense. And he says, we come here where humans are supposed to be welcome and everyone is judging us and whispering about us after we saved all your uh, butts. And then he says, but sure, I'm lying. Please, fearless leader, explain to me how we screw this up again. And so then he runs off. He says, I've had enough. But then watch what is done right here. Camilla says, I'm sorry, Iso. He's just very worried about his niece. I can go and talk to. And then Quake interrupts her and says, just let him uh, be alone. He could use a break. We all could. And then she was, she walks off after him, which I thought was weird. And then um, we get back to Anilix, and uh, the, the situation with the police has been resolved, but Karnak has double-crossed Boltagon and all the employees and took over the company now. So then when we cut back to uh, New Atelian again, Camilla being very humble and very human-like, as opposed to when she's written in her own comic and in uh, Champions, uh, decides to bring some food to Inferno. She feels bad, so she knocks on the door, and he answers the door, and he looks very embarrassed, and he says, Oh, hey, Miss Marvel, what's up? And she says, I thought you might be hungry. No shirt again, huh? I was just getting used to you being fully dressed. And uh, he said, Oh, yeah, actually, it's not a great, and then there's a noise in the background, something breaks. And she says, is Quake in there? And she says, yeah, we were just um, discussing. And she throws the food at him and says, well, I brought you both food or whatever. And then he says, Miss Marvel, wait, wait. So she runs off. He goes back in there. And then they just start eating the food that she had brought. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so what has happened is Quake had just run him down and just got in his bed with him and slept with him. And then she, had, she straight up blocked Kamala from going and talking to him and then jumped in his pants which was a terrible terrible move and then she says you know sorry I broke brought, uh, broke your Star Trek toy and he says it's a Millennium Falcon and uh, she says so you handled that really badly and he says I don't even know what that was and he goes she says really dude she has a crush on you and he says since when and she says, since always, think about it. She's young, but you never make her feel stupid. She's pretty and uptight, and you never wear a shirt. You're kind of cute in a damaged boy kind of way that some girls really like. And uh, then we get more terrible art of these. They cannot draw these people. Gosh, Quake looked like she just got hit in the face with a shovel. And uh, he says, you think I'm only kind of cute? And she says, yeah. And he says, oh, yeah, then what was this about? And he, she says, you're broken, Dante. Not judging, I am too. I just thought it'd be nice if we could help each other out uh, and forget about it for half an hour. But pity isn't a turn-on for me. I don't need a make-a-wish boyfriend. I was like, oh my God, you jerk. So then he says, F you, Daisy, and slams the door. And then goes back looking for uh, Kamala. Can't find her anywhere. And then um, after they talk for a little while with the young boy there, uh, he decides uh, he decides on something. He says, yeah, I guess it sounds like a weird, actually. He says, it's just a figure of speech, though. And he says, anyway, it's been nice catching up. Glad Lunella's dinosaur didn't eat you yet. i got to try to find Miss Marvel. So he leaves, and then at that point, an alarm goes off. But we notice that Quake is fixing his toy for him. So I was kind of thrown off like that. I was like, why would she do that unless she did feel some guilt for what she had done? And so then... They say, hey, what's happening? It says, someone attacked the royal guards and, and broke into the palace. So then Quake runs up and says, where's Dante? And Kamal's like, well, you'd know better than us. And I was like, oh, uh-oh, cat scratch. And then uh, she says, he got mad at me and went looking for you. And says, we need to find him. Something's up. And uh, she said, and Moon Girl's like, well, what did you say to him? She said, nothing. We barely spoke. And she's like, ew. And I thought that was kind of funny. And then... She said, everything was fine. He, he just kept asking about my time in S.H.I.E.L.D., about Nick Fury and all these old secret bases. And then Magic's like, oh, no. So then uh, there's a big explosion, and the, uh, the rest of the Inhumans are standing in front of them. And they say, okay, Warrior, you should surprise me, okay? Treason seems out of character even for a princess of Karnak. 
I've got four guards headed to the uh, infirmary and a ship missing from the hangar. So who wants to tell me why Inferno just destroyed the throne? Uh-oh. So uh, then we see that uh, Inferno is, is, is working on his own, trying to get something, trying to save his niece. And uh, I would just like to point out something very important here. I'd like to point out the way that they write Kamala. They write Kamala like a human being in this book. Now, the art is terrible. The art is atrocious. They shouldn't be embarrassed for even showing this in a, in a Marvel book. But here's the deal. The writing is okay. Now, it's very convoluted because uh, Rosenberg's trying to do too many things at one time. There's too many. I mean, it, it's this feels like one of those HBO TV shows where you have all this stuff going on, these side things going on with the different characters. It's too much. You don't have to have that in a comic book. Uh, I mean, okay, it's cool to try things like that, but not at the expense of confusing the reader. But here's the thing. They write Kamala very, very good. She's, she's written like a human being that has things that, she's, uh, that she feels bad for, things that she's trying to accomplish. She's got a crush on Inferno, which leads, is like the first time she's ever shown affection to someone in a comic book. Like They keep writing her like a robot. And uh, then you have this little love triangle going on with, uh, with Quake and, and them. And Quake at this point is a jerk she's just a jerk but i think she feels bad for it at the same time so it kind of it, it makes you wonder where is this gonna go but uh anyway other than that that's all i wanted to point out i just wanted to show you guys how kamala could be written not one time did they come out and say oh did you know kamala's muslim you know that was never never one of those deals she was just written like a human being but all right guys i'll talk to you later tell me what you think about this video tell me what you think about my thoughts hit the like button hit the subscribe button and dear God, we got to get some better artists over there at Marvel because this is trash. See you guys later. Underground Geek out.